The reflection today is on Christian hope. Christian hope means not being attached to anything, but living in anticipation of our encounter with the Lord. Our encounter with the Lord may come at any time. In December of 2013, I had my first encounter with him, and I became obedient to his will at that time, pledging it. In the Gospel of Luke, as it did for Zacchaeus, or in the next minute, as it did for my friend Chris, when he died suddenly in November of 2019, his God granted second chance, ending after an additional 17 years graced unto him. Or tomorrow, when you have a conversation with a person and only recognize him when he says, Peace be with you. Or some day, long in the future, when you too die. Whenever it occurs, you won't expect it, and you will, on that spot, need to choose. Follow Christ and give up everything, or abandon all you have professed, and stay for things. You must be willing to walk away from all things, all relationships in order to follow the Son of Man. You can have no other items or persons calling upon your time or your mind or your heart. He must be first in your mind, first in your heart, first in your soul, with there being no room for anything else. If you encounter him at death, this, of course, is far easier. The separation with the physical world has been made for you. But you are still to be his spirit then, unable to do other but attend on him. Can you make this choice? Can you separate your life to become obedient to the will of Christ after death? It is only scary for the briefest of seconds. Then all you feel is his love. It envelops you. It surrounds you. It never overwhelms you, though. You feel encompassed within it. And it is so very wonderful. It is so beautiful being inside of the embrace of his love. It is so comforting. You've never, ever felt this safe before or ever again. It is as if Everything you have ever wanted, needed, wished for, is all standing there in place. And he didn't move. And that was just him looking at me with love. I wasn't afraid. I didn't feel like the lowly, slimy sinner that I am because his love raised me up, lifted me up with his breath of forgiveness and love. It is beyond my human words to convey to you the joy, the love, the pure depth of feeling. But then, when his finger touched my shoulder, oh, I nearly collapsed 
from the power of his love in that brief, brief second of touch. And he didn't fully touch, he just glanced off my shoulder. Oh, it was not difficult to pledge obedience to him fully, completely, and unto my death. I pray you make the same choice so that we can spend eternity together in his service. Oh, just remember it that day. Remembering the touch makes my my legs go all weepy and wobbly, wobbly. It is so overwhelming. There is nothing, no word that describes it. I've even gone through the thesaurus maybe 20 or 30 times online thesauruses to find a word. And I've gone through ancient books and nothing anywhere describes it. I love every day of my life in his service. The challenges he presents me with, the teaching he presents and gives to me. I mean, he has taught me things that I could not have learned in three lifetimes. I've seen events of the Bible occurring. He has taken me back through his divine intervention and allowed me to see the stoning of St. Stephen. Um, I have not seen or wanted to see, for that matter, any of the deaths on any of the crosses. I haven't needed to see that. Um, but I'd, I'd wanted to see some of the martyrdoms to get a perspective on the life then and the saint, the martyrdom, because it was so totally different. And the Lord knew that I would not have any difficulty with it, having worked in forensics. You know, blood and death weren't really going to be a problem for me. But, you know, in the biblical story, we talked about how he enraged them with his face looking angelic. He really did look angelic. His face, the mean on his face, so changed. He was a very attractive man of the time, but then he changed. His whole face became beautiful. And I don't know if an angel came over him or was standing in front of him to change his face like that. But Christ said, here, I'll show you. And he took my hand and we jumped through time. And as soon as we landed, I looked around and I saw the crowd. And I quietly whispered, I said, we are at the martyrdom of St. Stephen. He said, yeah. He said, I figured you could understand from this. He said, you know the story. He says, this way you'll have perspective. He says, then you're safe. Nothing will happen to you ever with me. Okay. 
And so many times she's brought me to things like this. Because I've read the Bible stories. But to see it. He has expanded my mind to be able to understand and to teach the scriptures to you. Has given me an understanding of the writings. Who has written them? How they were written? So when I pull a writer, who, you know, someone who wrote on the scriptures, he tells me that one's lying. That one made it up. No, that one's not right. And if I'm writing something, I can hear him say, uh, uh, uh. And I'll start writing again. And he and I will talk as I'm writing. And I'll hear the spirit start laughing. And I'll be like, spirit? He's like, well, your first three sentences were really good. But then you went so far off on a tangent, I can't believe it. Spirit. And he says, well, that's why I said your first three sentences were really good. I thought we were going to have a really good one from that. How rude. And then he laughs his laugh and it's like, OK, I'll start it again. But I might have spent you know, four hours on what I'd written. And he tells me I have three good sentences. So, <laughs> and when I write total crap, they tell me I wrote total crap. So, if there is one thing he wants me to know fully, he shows it to me. And then the spirit will explain to me if I can't get some part of it. They are great educators. They are fabulous teachers. I love the spirit. For he is a joyous fellow with a fabulous sense of humor that really quite matches mine. As you heard me speak earlier, he helped me name one of the kittens. That they so love us. Please, love them. Honor them. Become obedient to the will of God. Every day. You will never have a regret. When something happens in your life, like you almost had a car accident, Say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Spirit. I know it is only by your hand and your will that that accident did not happen. Thank you. I go through every day thanking them for everything that happens. Because chance does not exist. Coincidence does not exist. It is those two working to protect us. And if you disclaim them, if you say, well, I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, but the Holy Spirit is just a bunch of made up you know, papist crap, then he won't assist you. And you'll see how much he exists in the next 48 hours. So, they both love us. They both love you. Love them. Honor them. You will have no regrets when you show your love to them.